Hey everyone, Chris here with more stories in cardboard. Today I'm going to do another episode of Five Cool Cards to Collect. One of the things that I really enjoy about watching other people's videos and also interacting with people in the comment section is I get a chance to see how other people see cards. And it's one of the things that I really enjoy about the hobby. I love hearing other people's opinions. And through what lens do they actually look at cards? Are they looking at color? Are they looking at card design? rarity, place, and history. There's all different kinds of things that you can look at that really make you appreciate cards. Now, I've shown this card before. I showed this when I uh, originally got it. And the reason I wanted to show this again, um, first of all, just kind of looking at this card, this is Tommy Davis. One of the things I really love about the design of this card is the dark grass that he's standing on. And then as you kind of work your way up the card, it really accents the uniform. It, it accents the Dodger uniform, and you have that blue sky in the background. And if you look up here in the top right-hand corner, you can see the LA Dodgers sign. And then over here to the left, you've got that old analog clock underneath the American flag. But it's a card that I really, it's a card that really spoke to me. And I ended up getting getting it for what I thought was a pretty pretty good price. And once I got that, I was looking at other cards from that set. And that set is the 1961 Morel Meets card. But I wanted to get a Hall of Famer. But Sandy Koufax, Duke Snyder, they were a little on the pricey side. But I did end up finding this card of Don Drysdale. And this is a grade lower than the Tommy Davis, but I actually got it for about the same price. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Get a Hall of Famer for about the same price and a grade lower. Couldn't really pass that up. And what I find interesting about this particular card, all the other cards in the Morel Meat set, uh, the pictures were taken at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And for whatever reason, the Don Drysdale cards were not uh, pictured there. They were taken at Wrigley Field in California. Now, I had no idea that there was actually a Wrigley Field in California, so I learned something, but that's, that's actually where the Los Angeles Angels played in their first inaugural season. And you see here, kind of on this card, much like in Wrigley Field, you have the ivy on the fence back there. But I love this this pose of Don Drysdale. I mean, it, it's a full bleed photo, which I really enjoy on these. It, it's it's not distracted by borders or anything like that. But it's just a really sharp, clear picture. I mean, you can even see the wrinkles on his on his uniform pants, which I just think is amazing. And so yeah, I picked this up recently to kind of add to my Morel Meats collection. Um, thought it was a pretty good deal. Couldn't really pass that up. And so we have we have some bonuses today. I'm actually showing more than five cards. And the next one that I'm going to show, share with you, is this T206 card of Fred Merkel. Now, I, this card, I love, I love the red background. I love the portraits from this set. I'm a big fan of the portraits in the T206 set. Um, there's something just classical about them to me, and I just think they're just wonderful designs. And this is a Sweet Caporal Series 150, which means that, that this particular card was distributed in 1909. Now, the interesting thing about Fred Merkel, and some of you may have heard of him, unfortunately, he's more well-known for for a mishap than he is for his actual play. And late in the 1908 baseball season, the Giants were in a battle with the Cubs for the pennant. And late in the season, the Giants were up by percentage points going to play a game against the Cubs. And long story short, there was a man on third base, Merkel was on first base, Al Bridwell was up to bat, Bridwell got a base hit, and Moose McCormick, who was on third base, came home to score what was supposed to be the winning run. 
Now, then Merkel was supposed to go to second base and touch second base. He didn't do that because fans were piling onto the field. And it was actually kind of commonplace back then where they didn't do that. And it was just kind of, it was a rule that was never enforced. Well, they basically ended up trying to enforce this rule because of the importance of the game. And the Cubs kind of played it under protest and the, the umpires went into the dugout and they kind of discussed what they were going to do and they ultimately called him out. Now it was getting late and the game was actually called because of darkness. So the game ended in a tie and it was ultimately, what ended up happening is at this point in the season, there were like, I think maybe seven or eight games left or, or about 10 games, I think. And you kind of hope that things are going to play itself out and nothing ever comes of this game. But as fate would have it, the Giants and the Cubs ended up tied at the end of the season. So they had to replay this game. And in the replay game, the Cubs ended up beating the Giants. I think the score was 4-2, to two, but they ended up beating the Giants. Ended up winning the pennant, going to the World Series, and winning the World Series. So unfortunately, Merkel is kind of unfortunately known for that. It kind of haunted him for, for the rest of his life. But he was a really good baseball player. Very, very good. Not Hall of Fame good, but I think he had somewhere around 1,500 hits. He was a very good first baseman. And the other unfortunate thing about this was he was not the regular first baseman. That, that belonged to veteran Fred Tenney, who was actually out with an injury that game. And I do have this card of Merkel also, which is kind of neat. This is from the 1961 new card baseball scoops. And... These are kind of a cool card to collect as well. They they kind of show historical things that happened in baseball and a lot of really cool cards from this set. And I have some others from this set that maybe someday I'll share with you. But And I find this interesting because he's actually wearing a Cubs jersey <laughs> in this card, um, which he ended up playing for the Cubs towards the end of his career. So I had two baseball cards and actually some extras. And then the other three cards I wanted to show are, are football cards. Now, I do believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I know some people do not like this set, the 1953 Bowman football set, because of the big white football. I like the big white football. I think it reflects a time in history when the NFL in 1953 was the first year that they had nationwide, coast to coast, national football games being played on Saturday nights and they would use a white football so I really think Bowman was using this in their design to kind of help promote football which was really just kind of starting to become popular in America at the time now this card of uh, Frank Gifford a lot of people you know Frank Gifford's in the Hall of Fame just a great football player but a lot of people kind of in my generation or even after they kind of know him as the voice of Monday Night Football. And I love this card. It's just, just a fabulous looking card. It's a great pose. Um, I love the green from the trees in the background. And then you have the, the really blue sky with the clouds. And the, the colors on this card are just absolutely stunning in my opinion. This is a card that I just recently picked up. And staying with that set... Is one of my favorite cards from this set and it's the Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch card. He's also a Hall of Famer and he got his nickname from kind of the crazy way that his legs looked when he was running. I looked for this card for a really long time because I wanted to get this card in a higher grade because this card with the you see the yellow the background the yellow it tends to fade and it, it seems to be a, a little bit harder to find one that doesn't have the the yellow fading. I think this is just an incredible example. It shows that really deep, rich yellow background with his blue Rams jersey and the gold numbers. And then he's got that blonde hair. And it's just, I think it's a great football card. Elroy Hirsch and the Rams from this time period have some of the best looking football cards from those early 1950 years. And then the last card I wanted to show is of Hall of Famer Fran Tarkington. 
Fran Tarkington. This is his 1962 Topps rookie card. And what I, I love about this card, other than Fran Tarkington, when he retired, he, he held just about every passing record. So he was a great quarterback. He was kind of known for scrambling. Unfortunately, never won a Super Bowl and played in, what's it, three Super Bowls? Three, I think three Super Bowls and lost all three. Um, which is unfortunate. He actually played in the very first Super Bowl that I watched, and I was pulling for the Rams, or I'm sorry, the Vikings in that Super Bowl. And what I love about the design of this card is, number one, is this card's a little bit difficult to find centered, and, and I think this one has pretty nice centering. But I love the, the black borders and how it really goes with the purple jersey that he has on. I, I think that just looks great. And it's a really cool card. It's one that I enjoy having in my collection. And you've got the little black and white photo up there in the left. I think it's a really cool card to collect. But anyway, that's all I have time for today. I, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope there was maybe a card that you kind of saw in a different way. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you later.